Well, let's dive a little farther into Article 210. We left last time off at 210.8, which was GFCI receptacles and where they're required. Now we're going to get into 210.11, which is where branch circuits are required. In 210.11a, the number of branch circuits is going to be determined by the calculated load. Now, the calculated load is something that we are going to start calculating uh, when we get into Chapter 3 of our book. That's going to help us determine how many circuits we have to have in our dwelling unit. Not only do we have to have the right number of branch circuits based on VA per square foot, but we also have enough have to have enough branch circuits to be sufficient to supply the load served. So even if we come out with a small home that only needs two circuits, if we have a lot of uh, pieces of equipment that have to be plugged in that will take more power than what the circuits will allow or those two circuits, we're going to have to put more circuits in there by code. So in 210.11b, it talks to us or lets us know that we have to evenly proportion our load among the circuits that we calculated. The reason for that is they don't want somebody to calculate that they have to have six circuits and they put 60 outlets in there and they put 40 on one circuit and then they they take the rest of the 20 receptacles left over and put them on the other five or four apiece. So they want you to evenly proportion it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have 10 receptacles per circuit, but you do have to do something pretty close to keep them together. Now we also have requirements in a dwelling unit that require us to, in 210.11c1, we have to have at least two small appliance branch circuits. And those are going to serve our countertops. And there are other places that those can serve besides the counter, and we will get into that uh, later on in class. We also have to have a laundry branch circuit, and there's only one of those required, at least one. And then we have to have a GFCI branch circuit for our bathrooms. There's at least one of those required as well. So let's move on and get into the AFCI protection. Article 210.12 explains to us where we have to have AFCI protection. If you look at this excerpt out of my code book, and you can follow along in your code book if you'd like, but 210.12a in a dwelling unit, it lets us know that the way that I want to surmise it would be everywhere that a GFCI is required, an AFCI is required. So if that receptacle doesn't have to be GFCI protected, it's going to have to be AFCI protected. So in your family rooms and dining rooms and living rooms and all over, you're going to have to have AFCI protected receptacles. Let's move into Article 210, but Section 3. Now we've skipped uh, quite a few uh, of our articles, and there are a few that do apply to dwelling units, but I want to go over those in class. But these are the ones that I want to hit today in the video. In 210.50 is our general requirements. And in general requirements, 250 or 210.50c, one requirement requires that we have to have um, a receptacle outlet for an appliance, and it has to be within six feet of the appliance. So if you have uh, a receptacle for your freezer, it has to be within six feet of the freezer to count as a receptacle for that freezer. It can't be 15 feet away with an extension cord. It has to be within six feet. What I want to do right now is let's go and see what we need to do to be able to find that in the code if we were asked that on a code test. So here I am in the code book. Now my question would be, if I have a receptacle outlet for an appliance, how far away can I make it and still be within code and have it still be for that appliance. So I have appliance, I have receptacle, and I have outlet. Those are three key words. So why don't we start with the A. Let's go to appliance.
All right, I'm in appliances. So branch circuit, it says branch circuit, see appliances. I'm, I'm looking for receptacles and outlets. So let's move down a little bit. Uh, overcurrent. Uh, I don't see outlets anywhere. How about receptacles? No, nothing there. Well, let's see. I said I had appliances and receptacles and outlets. So let's try O for outlets. How about that? Let's move down. I'm to outlets. Well, look, there's one of my keywords. I have outlets as my, my uh, index topic and then appliance right there, keyword. 210.50C. Let's let's try that. I'll pull this up. 210.50C. Appliance receptacle outlets. An appliance receptacle outlet installed in a dwelling unit for a specific appliance, such as laundry equipment, shall be installed within six feet of the intended location of the appliance. All right, it has to be. So if it's not within six feet, it's not for that appliance, or it's not considered to be for that appliance. All right, so we found it in outlets and appliances. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try receptacles. Let's go to R. And there's receptacles. Uh, let's see, appliances. Uh, nothing there. Uh, oh, right here, outlets. Look at that, 210.50. Let's try that. Let's pull this up. Okay, right there, 210.50. Now, it doesn't give a C like the appliance requirement did inside of uh, outlets, but it did at least get us close so we could find it if we were looking for it uh, in a hurry in a, a code question or a code test scenario. So uh, there were two ways that you can find that receptacle. All right, so let's get back to what we were talking about. So let's check back with Article 210.52a, and that gives us our general provisions or where and how we need to put in our receptacles. This part of the article is very important, especially in a dwelling unit. Uh, this is definitely one of the most easiest ways to get a red tag on a job site is to not follow these rules or the codes. In the general provision, it's telling us that in the kitchen and family room, dining room, living room, parlor, uh, all the rooms basically of the house, we have to install our receptacles according to these codes. So the number one code in 21052A lets us know that here's what our spacing requirements are. The spacing requirements are such that any point along a wall, we should be able to touch it and be no more than six feet from a receptacle. Well, the code says wall space. Now it needs to define what a wall space is. So in number two in wall space, it tells us that a wall space is any wall that is two feet or more. Well, it also lets us know that as long as it's unbroken uh, along the floor line by doorways or other openings, fireplaces, fixed cabinets, anything that would stop your progress if you're walking down the wall or an opening in the wall that you could walk through. So if any wall is two feet or greater, you're going to have to start using the six foot, 12 foot rule which is six feet from any opening or break in the wall and 12 foot between the receptacles. Also, this code article lets us know that if there's a fixed panel on the exterior wall, that is included in wall space. Where that comes into play is if you have a French door that has one side that doesn't open, the side that doesn't open is counted as part of the wall. If you have a sliding glass door, the side that doesn't open is counted as part of the wall. The rest of that article, or part of the article, tells us that the space afforded by fixed room dividers, such as freestanding bar type counters or railings, uh, anything protruding out of the wall that's fixed up to the wall, we have to count as wall space. 
Well, what do I do if I have a glass partition in a wall and it's over two feet and then I have another door on the other side? There's no way to put a receptacle inside of that partition. Well, the code addresses that we can use floor receptacles in 21052A3 as long as they are within 18 inches of the wall. If they're farther than 18 inches from the wall, then they don't count as a receptacle for wall space. So let's look at a typical room. You can see in this room, starting clockwise, I have a door. So that's a break in the wall. From that door, I go six feet, there's a receptacle. From that receptacle, I have to be within 12 feet of the next receptacle. And here it is. Now, anytime I touch this wall, I'll be within six feet of either receptacle. That meets code. Now I'm 12 feet to the next receptacle. I'm six feet to my sliding glass door. Uh, this type of door here that slides both sides slide, which I've never really seen that, but you know, maybe that's an installation out there somewhere. Well, because both of these panels slide, they don't count as wall space. But there happens to be a fixed glass panel between the two sets of sliding doors. And it is at least two feet. It requires a receptacle, and I cannot put a receptacle on a glass partition, so I have to put it in the floor. So here we are, right in the floor. Now from that point I have another set of sliding glass doors. Nothing I can do there because it's not considered wall space. But once I leave the jam of that sliding glass door, I have to be within six feet of that opening with my next receptacle. And in this particular drawing, that's where I'm at. I gotta be 12 feet to the next outlet. There I am. I move from there to the door. I have to be within six feet then of this door. So if at 12 feet, I, I was here, and then I was 8 feet from here, well, then I'd probably have to reposition my outlets so that I would have one maybe about right here and another one over, let's say, right here. Kind of distribute them out a little, little more evenly. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's uh, look at another scenario here. Let's say I have a set of stairs right here, and this is my railing. Here are my stairs. Now, if I had a set of stairs here, and that was my railing, here's what would be required. From here to here would have to be six feet. Or I would have to install another receptacle. Now let's say along here, this is 10 feet, and this is four feet on this side. So from here to my first receptacle, which if this is a railing, it's gonna to have to be a floor receptacle. I couldn't have any more than six feet. So if that's what I did, I would have eight feet left over, because this is 10 plus four, it's 14. So I would take 14 minus six, that gives me eight feet. So if I went from here to here to here, I would have no more than four feet from when I hit the wall. To be able to have another receptacle, which would be within my 12 feet. Because overall, this would be 12 feet. Well, that's all I have for tonight. And we'll talk more in class tomorrow about some of these other codes. This is quite a long article that has a lot of information that we're going to need to start laying out uh, our dwelling units on some plans. So we'll use some application uh, in class 
so that you guys can apply these codes uh, as you're learning them. So as always, please rewind and take notes if you didn't take notes. I'll see you next class, and be safe.